Well, Valentina, briefly, she's a bio, bioarchaeologist. She is a special, a specialist in anthropology and archaeobotany. She studied in, in Italy, in the University of Siena, where she took her, her master in medieval archaeology and in archaeobotany some years ago. And then he, he worked on, on her PhD in historical geography in the University of Genoa. Uh, so she take her doctorate in, in 2018, and and then she has been also working as postdoc in, in this same university in Genoa in Italy, North Italy, and she also has collaborated with different geographical teams, especially in Toulouse with uh, Geot in, in France, and also in, in the University of Basque County with the people who works on, on medieval archaeology there and also taking, working on, on some partly environmental problems and so on. Uh, from Also from the, these last two years, she has collaborated um, with uh, our team, with GIA, with the Landscape Archaeology uh, Research Team uh, in ICAC uh, in different uh, projects, uh, especially working in, in, on mountain landscapes which are the projects that I conduct, I direct. And now she she's um, from last December, she's working as a, a, a Juan de la Tierra postdoctoral research uh, in the project, in the research program that she is going to, to explain today to us. And I hope that um, she's focused on landscape in, in high mountain environments from this uh, historical, geographical, and, and paleo paleobotanical point of perspective. I hope that um, the conference will interest you, and I, without more, taking more time, I give the, the word to, to Valentina. Thank you, Valentina, when you want. Thank you. Um, let's start with the presentation. I'm sharing the, the screen. Well, um, thank you, Jose Maria, again for uh, this introduction, and uh, good morning to everybody. I'm very pleased to be uh, to be here to present my project uh, and uh, to work again within the ICAC and with uh, with the job group. And um, as Jose Maria already said, I'm uh, an anthropologist and an environmental archaeologist. And um, recently, I focused my research on the study of transhumans breathing and with particular attention to the effect that uh, these practices, this activity, leave in the environment. Um, my project uh, started uh, three months ago and uh, in this presentation I will show you uh, the main issues, the main problems uh, uh, linked to, to the study of uh, transhumans. Uh, then I will try to explain uh, what kind of methods and research approach I want to apply, uh, presenting also the study areas uh, and uh, uh, briefly explaining uh, the expected uh, results. As you know, transhumans uh, is the seasonal movement of livestock. And uh, in 2019, it has been inscribed in the intangible cultural heritage of humanities. But of course, uh, transhumans uh, has left uh, a rich, tangible heritage represented by archaeological evidences. Uh, both uh, the most recognizable one, such as uh, the pastoral structure, and uh, the less recognizable one, the biostratigraphic evidences that are buried in the ground, in the earth. Well, you can see the uh, most used uh, biostratigraphic evidences in archaeological research. Uh, seeds, wood and charcoal, animal bones, pollen, uh, the future of pedology and soil chemistry. And what are the main, um, the most used interpretative model in the study of such remain? Um, here, for example, dealing with, uh, with charcoal, which is uh, my uh, my, my study focus, uh, when it, uh, it deals with uh, anthropogenic activities, uh, um, it is frequently interpreted as uh, a sign of deforestation, for example, 
uh, you know, fire activity to open up faster. Um, it has been also uh, linked to the, to the variation used to understand the variation of the timber line and its uh, fluctuation to time. Um, it has also been uh, uh, studied to understand the dynamics of floristic composition. For example, the presence or uh, the absence of, uh, of a species uh, can mean uh, the presence of a selection of the vegetation uh, to some specific purposes. Well, but the presence or the absence of a species does not always allow the identification of the management system. Um, here, for example, you have uh, uh, two photos of the same area. Uh, well, not this, exactly the same site, but they are not uh, so far from each other. Um, anyway, the area is uh, Coma de Vaca in uh, Ester Pyrenees uh, that has been a very important uh, sector for transhumans. Uh, the, the CAC and the JAP group uh, have done many research in this area. So try to um, characterize the history of such uh, summer pastor. Um, well, here in this uh, photo, uh, we can see uh, probably the same vegetation species. Um, circle in red, you can see probably a mountain pine. This is uh, a quite common vegetation at this uh, altitude. But uh, even if it's the same species, the management is different. In the historical photo, um, pine was subject uh, probably to shredding practices. Shredding is uh, the cut of uh, lateral branches in order to obtain, uh, for example, leaf fodder for animals or uh, bedding, or also to, um, to, to manure or to cover the roof of, uh, of structure. So dealing with my research, uh, I wonder what type of biostratigraphic evidences does this practice leave? It is a problem. Well, when we talk about transhumans, uh, we must keep in mind that at least since the Middle Ages, uh, it was part of a complex multiple land use system. Um, here you can see a map uh, dated to 16th century representing the uh, summer pasture in the, in the Apennine, in Liguria, in, the, in Italy. If uh, we look at the detail of this map, we can see represented a multiple land use system. This means that the same environmental resource was used for many different purposes, according, for example, um, the period of the year, the local, access right, the local property, property and so on. Um, here the summer pasture are represented as a beach woodland, here and here. Beach woodland that uh, of course was grazed, but uh, was used also to obtain a pole for sheep in Genova. And uh, the, sum, the, the summer pasture um, has represented also as a beach wooded meadow with temporary soil. Such management system had uh, an important effect. It uh, activated the local fauna, which means that uh, it allowed, in this case, uh, the presence of hair. Uh, so also in this case, uh, for me, it's important to, to try to understand uh, what type of biostratigraphy this, uh, this system and this practices leaves. So when we face uh, to, to such complex, uh, complex activity, complex management system, uh, we need uh, a high resolution analysis. So it is necessary. And also we need to, to shift, to move from a general uh, perspective of human activity, of human impact, toward uh, um, a more complex uh, idea of agro-silvo pastoral practices, where an important uh, role uh, have the activation practices that are the ecological effect uh, that adds to the production 
and affect the ecological functioning of the world system. And uh, frequently, biostratigraphic evidences are the result of such activation practices. So to identify past aggressive pastoral practices, we need, of course, to work in an interdisciplinary research group. It is mandatory. We have to cross-check every different sources, every different information, uh, and not only to merge, to, to put together, uh, like uh, in, a, in a multidisciplinary research. Um, well, in this case, uh, those are the methods and the research approach I hope to, I want to apply in my project. Uh, they are, of course, not sufficient, uh, and I think that uh, there are many other methods uh, I, I wish to apply, but sometimes in a project uh, you cannot use uh, whatever you want because uh, uh, there, there are not many times uh, or uh, uh, all the expertise are not available. Uh, anyway, in, in my case, um, I will focus uh, especially in uh, my research in, uh, in anthropology and especially in dendro and pedoanthropology. Because I think that uh, those methods are, are quite potential um, for recognizing the wood condition before charring. Um, so to, to go into, into the detail, and to detect the, the, some effect of, uh, of practices. Um, I think also that uh, historical ecology uh, approach has proven to be, to be useful, not only in the study of, uh, of the effect of past agro-silvopastoral practices to the current vegetation, but also in a different interpretation, for example, of palynological results. Because uh, historical ecology, so the historical approach, uh, can identify in the variation of some species uh, peculiar production and uh, activation practices. Uh, I also think that, uh, as you can see before, that documentary uh, sources are uh, import important, very important, because uh, we can understand better the local actor and uh, the right of access to the pastoral resource. Um, I wish to uh, also apply a local analysis uh, and uh, a regressive approach. Um, the regressive approach helps to control the variation of the environmental system through time and to better characterize the causes that, that produce them. Well, here's some, uh, some suggestions, some tips of uh, if you are interested to, to understand, for example, better the multiple land use system and um, to, to see how this uh, approach and the, this uh, research methodology uh, can, uh, can be potential uh, dealing with uh, pastoral activities. Uh, those are some of the, of the research done in, uh, at the University of Genova uh, by the, the LASA group. And uh, for example, here, the, there is a, a very complex uh, environmental management uh, dealing with, uh, with uh, alder. Uh, so if, uh, if you are interested, you, you have some, some reading. Well, um, those are the two study areas I chose. One is located in the Ester Pyrenees, in the Puig Pedros, in the municipality of, uh, of Merandes, and the other one is uh, in Italy, in the Maritime Alp, in an area between the Monte Saccarello and the Punta Margueres. I choose this area also because they are, uh, uh, respectively, important, an important sector of transhumans also in a Mediterranean perspective. Although it is still necessary to understand the characteristic of such a phenomenon. Well, since many years, um, the ICAC and the JAP group have investigated the Ester Pyrenees. 
shedding new light on the history of transhumans and on the role of livestock in the creation of the high mountain cultural landscape. And uh, having such uh, a rich research background uh, will be very important in, uh, in helping me with my investigation. So here you have uh, some of the most important rules and uh, the summer pasture land linked to the coastal, to the winter pasture. Um, and here you can see uh, some of the uh, last year research we've done in the in the Pic Pedros in Meranges, uh, the survey, the archaeological surveys, allow to, to detect uh, 119 livestock structures grouped in uh, at least 20 deposits, showing uh, very different phases of uh, occupation, uh, but starting from uh, at least the, the late Neolithic. Uh, so it is, uh, it is very interesting. And also sur such survey allow us to detect uh, environmental archaeology sites, so very potential for uh, the founding of the biostratigraphic uh, uh, marker. And this uh, is, uh, is the area of uh, Maritima Alp uh, between the Monte Saccarello here and Punta Maguarez. Um, well, also in this case, this area is uh, a fulcrum of, uh, of an important movement of flock uh, between uh, coastal pasture, so winter pasture, and uh, summer pasture. And it was an important site also because uh, there, uh, there are many flock uh, coming from uh, France, from Arles, and uh, also from uh, Piemont. So, uh, there is a fulcrum of regional and uh, extra-regional uh, uh, movement. I chose this, uh, this area also because uh, uh, there has been uh, many, many documentary research and textual uh, uh, analysis. Um, it's a border area, which means that uh, the different municipality the different states during time have, have fight each other. So a lot of documentary resources have been produced. And they, and they are very potential for me because uh, the presence of this documentation will be useful for applying the regressive approach and to identify the most promising archaeological deposit, both in terms of pastoral building and biostratigraphic evidences. As you can see, I have uh, many information about uh, uh, buildings. So you can see there are also some differences between uh, one building to the other. And, and I have, for example, for in this case, the description of uh, the different typology of structure. Um, I, have, I have also um, the, the access right described the type of uh, pasture land. So many, many information that could be very useful. And uh, well, this area, the area I choose, uh, is not very well investigated in terms of archaeological uh, research. Uh, but the surrounding uh, is very known because uh, there are many different sites uh, with uh, um, evidences of transhumance activity, of uh, pasture activity since the Neolithic and are very different sites. So, uh, for example, settlement or uh, site linked to, to cultural uh, uh, rituals. So a very important area, but not very well investigated in this case. Um, to conclude, the expected result. Um, well, I think that uh, I hope to, to, to have some good results in terms of, uh, of methods and research. So, uh, for example, I hope to improve the analysis and the interpretation of biostratigraphic uh, evidences. So, a better knowledge of transhuman's effect on the environment. And also to improve 
a general knowledge of transhumanist history. So follow the discontinuity, characterize better the practices. And, and of course, I think that uh, in a project, uh, a focus uh, has to be done also to application. So why archaeology matter and why, uh, how our result can help uh, not only to uh, disseminate information, but also when we deal with environment, uh, we can also suggest uh, some uh, good information, some good tips uh, in terms of uh, environmental planning, because uh, environment, uh, it's, uh, it's a living artifact. It's a living archaeological artifact. And uh, if we know his history, uh, we can, uh, I think, uh, better manage uh, uh, today. So I finish and uh, thank you for, uh, for hearing me. Thank you very much, Valentina, okay. for your explanation, for your talk. Well, I, I think that you have shown the uh, well, the project, the program, the research program, the, this interdisciplinary team, and this uh, in the, in, in, and this regressive approach, which is something which is, uh, I think, uh, quite remarkable in 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 a, in a high mountain environment. No? Here, at least in in Catalonia, we have a lot of text, but but um, it's not so evident that uh, these texts give. Us uh, enough information in order to to, to do a, a regressive approach or a regressive analysis in refer to high mountain environment. So um, as you have shown in, in Italy, your documents are quite exceptional. Uh, historical maps and, and written sources are quite exceptional, also for for mountain environments. And that, I think that that allow allows you to to, to develop. So this uh, historical geographical approach, which uh, together with uh, mountain archaeology and, and paleoenvironment and geoarchaeologists, give us uh, quite a large image um, of of, um, of uh, landscape dynamics in in mountain environments, high mountain environments. Well, um, I, I, so congratulations for for your project and I, I, I hope that uh, the results will be uh, excellent in the following years and months. <laughs> you know, as uh, well, anthropology, in fact, is one of, of the main um, uh, uh, results that we have in when we, we do archaeology in, in high mountain environments. So we, we, when we excavate in, in structures, normally what we find all sure is sediment and this sediment is, is often rich in, in, in charcoal and, and, and bioarchaeological remains. So uh, your, your presence in, um, in a, and your role in, in, a, in, a, in a, this type of research project is essential. You are in the middle of a, of a research where that uh, in, a, in an interdisciplinary team where archaeologists work together with paleoecologists as well, but you are in the middle of this between ecology and paleoecology and geography and archaeology. So um, I'm I'm proud of that and I, I hope that the results will be remarkable. Um, I would like to, before, in order to open uh, a ton of, 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 of questions of between people that are uh, following us now, I would like to, to ask you to start uh, asking you if you uh, could give us uh, more information about what um, are you expect to, to find in the, uh, in the between the comparison of these two windows, the, the, the Ligurian window and the, the Eastern Pyrenees window, and which type of comparison you are going to do, and, and, and which are what, what results you expect to, to achieve in that comparison. Okay. Um, well, in this comparison, in, in, ter of, in terms of uh, methodology, uh, I, I choose this, uh, this area just because for, for Italy, I have many documentary information, so um, I can uh, follow the, the variation of historical situation and the variation of uh, biostratigraphic evidences, so I can control the variation. 
better because I have many information for uh, since the medieval period uh, until uh, the contemporary age. This could be useful uh, um, when I study periods more ancient. So, for example, in uh, also in uh, in the Eastern Pyrenees, when we have a lot of inform archaeological information, uh, but not so many study in terms of documentary research. So, so I think that uh, the study area of Italy can be useful uh, in, ter in terms of methodologies. And then the comparison uh, in terms of uh, general research, it's, um, I think that they are very, both the Pyrenees and the Maritime Alp uh, are uh, the mm, a fulcrum of uh, a complex system of transhumans. Uh, uh, also uh, important for the French area, for the French uh, um, coast, because, uh, for example, in for the for the Maritime Alp, we know that uh, flocks go to the to the coast of the France of the France. Um, I think we have to explain better uh, the the to characterize better the temporary of these uh, these uh, phenomena. And so I, I think that those um, uh, extreme area, just the, those uh, the, the different area, one in the in the western, in the eastern part, and one in the western part, uh, can be uh, can be useful uh, in terms of a general perspective of uh, Mediterranean transhuman uh, activities. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Well, it's time for for questions. So. Um, you can show your hands, and and I uh, will give you your turn. There's any uh, anyone who wants to to ask something to Valentina. Everything is clear. No questions. Yes, Graham. Graham, yes, please, uh, Valent yes. Valentina, that was a, a, a wonderful presentation and, oh, and so inspiring as well. Uh, as a geographer, I found the cartography absolutely stunning. Uh, is there a chance you could share the, um, the, the, the sources with us so that we can uh, we, we can enjoy and, and, and learn more from the, this, this uh, huge resource you have? Mm -hmm. Yes, um, well, the in terms of bibliography, I can send the information where some research have done uh, on these uh, on these documents. And uh, if I understand the questions, uh, the I have many different cartography, many different map for the Alps, for the Apennine, and they they are very important uh, when uh, when we deal with the reconstruction of the history of uh, mountain pasture and mountain landscape but i don't know if i, I understand your question <laughs> ah the phone the phone it's uh, it's uh, closed it, it it strikes me how rich and um nuanced um and layered the evidence on the, the on the cartography is um, you, you have such rich um, social indicators, um, mm. as well as opportunities for um, uh, exploring the relationship between the communi communities at either end of, of the transhumance uh, um, routes. Um, yes, the, lo the local actor, because, uh, for example, those maps are also linked to many different textual sources explaining exactly what were done there, what there was the, the right access, the property, uh, the problems also in, uh, in that area. So uh, it's very important for me because I can reach more in depth the practices. And when I I dug the, the herd and I find biostratigraphic evidences, I can suppose uh, comparing with uh, with historical information uh, what I I'm seeing so um, to 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 uh, to respond to the question what kind of biostratigraphic this practice leaves so it's the idea is uh, to try to do this and uh, 
and also to help with the archaeological evidences that are very rich in, in the Pyrenees. Uh, at, and so I have a, a, a great background uh, in terms of archaeological research that uh, it's also important uh, uh, when we approach uh, the most ancient period. Thank you. Because we don't have the documentary resource. <laughs> I think that Toby Wilkinson uh, uh, would like to, to ask something as well. Hi, oh, yeah. can, can, can you hear me? Yes. Yes. Great. OK, thank you very much, Valentina. That was really fascinating. It looks like it's going to be a very busy, very interesting project. Um, I, I also wanted to ask a question about the maps because they are obviously very fascinating. Um, that one in particular, well, the one where you had the different size houses and so on. Um, I can uh, share if you want again. Uh, I try oh, that'd be cool to see it again. Yeah. Um, I mean, my my question was really. I mean, this is a totally this is a question from ignorance mm -hmm. um, and curiosity, and you may not know the exact answer at the moment. But um, I mean, what what was the motivation behind creating these maps? Because often when you have document documentary evidence, it's about states which are trying to gain control of an area in some sense, or whether it's taxation or whatever. I mean, what, what's the background to mm -hmm. the creation of this? What, why are they doing it? Well, the background is exactly the control, the, the, the right of access to that resource. So here, for example, we have a, a little village, but also the estate of Genova or uh, the Piemonte uh, that won't control those pasture land. So it's something like uh, it's me, not it's me, not the other uh, place, it's me, not that that practice is uh, it's it's me. So it's um, it's a fight. There are many fights each other, and so the the map and historical text are sources that testify the the right of access. So the who can control what and where. So it's that that for reason there are many uh, description of uh, the practices, uh, the landscape, uh, and the structure and uh, and the role of the of the this structure. It's, uh, the, the, the motive, uh, the causes is uh, exactly to to control to so, control uh, so the, the land. The, the the, the people producing them, they, I mean, presumably the people producing these maps are not the transhumans themselves, or, or, or are they? Are they people who are actually interested in? Mm, well, who made exactly are cartographers that uh, sometimes come from big city, but uh, who call them are also local people. So the local people that uh, call uh, a cartographer and or uh, um, the, the, the municip ask to the municipality to uh, to produce uh, such documentation and to mm -hmm. explain who have the right of access to what resources. Interesting. Uh, and from, from which data are you uh, um, For example, for the Maritime Alp, uh, since Middle Ages, but uh, most of all in the, um, 16th, 17th century until uh, well, the, the, the Second World War, because, uh, you know, the, uh, the Italy and France, uh, the, the border is changed, uh, so the, the document and the transhumans was already there. Um, so the, the, I have many, I, I'm the most, one of the most important uh, researchers that studied all this uh, documentation is uh, Beatrice Palmero from uh, from Piemonte. So I I I want to I hope to collaborate with with uh, her with, uh, with she because um, she has studied uh, for example the uh, try to understand the differences of uh, between uh, long transhumans and short transhumans. So. Um, when the long transhumans start or restart, and uh, when the short transhumans end or restart, because it's always a fluctuation, a discontinuity. And I hope to see also discontinuity in biostratigraphic evidences. <laughs> but I don't know very well 
in terms of uh, what? Of the distribution, uh, in terms of uh, differences uh, in morphological future, for, I think in charcoal, for example. Um, if we... Um, oh, I, I, I lost my presentation, I tried to... to um, okay, this, the, the photos. You see the photo? Yes. So I wonder, in terms of, uh, for example, charcoal and pollen, this practice, what kind of uh, evidence is this? Uh, for example, these practices can cause uh, a low percentage of pollen because the only part of the plant that can produce pollen is this one. And it's very few, it's very little. And when we analyze the pollen in the ground and we see very low percentage of pollen, it means that there is an absence of pine, for example, or there is this practice. It's a problem. And we don't know very well the effect that such practices leave. This is only one of the multiple practices used for, in, in, for uh, transhumans, and, uh, uh, but also for many other uh, silvo, agro-silvo practices. Yeah, thank you. Thank you, Valentina. Sure, the, the combination of, of uh, Anthropology, alcohol analysis, and this pollen and environmental report is essential in this type of, of research. And the, the information is complementary, absolutely complementary. So while um, it's very interesting, I, I would like also to, um, to point out that um, the, the, this area uh, in the Alps, uh, in the Italian Alps, the southwestern Italian Alps, I, I think it also could be also interesting in relation with transhumans in Roman times, uh, connected with um, with uh, the territorium of Ar Arles in Arles in, in, mm -hmm. in South Province in, in France in South Eastern France. I know that because when when I was uh, postdoc in, in France, I, I was working with uh, Philippe, uh, Professor Philippe Lebeau. And we 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 analyzed in that period 20 years ago. We were studying uh, the origins of, of long long transhumans, historical long transhumans, and the possibility of, of that these long transhumans um, uh, started in Roman times. And I I, I remember that uh, Le, Le Ho, uh, he thought always that um, he he always um, analyzes this problem in in con, uh, in, in terms of vertical transhumans. It means in the connection with, with the littoral um, areas with uh, South uh, French Alps, not with Italian Alps, which means uh, an east-west uh, uh, transhumance road. And uh, the, 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 so I think that, as you have shown in, in your maps, that this this road of transhumance is quite important between the between the delta of the of, of, of Rhine. No, in South France, near the, in the surroundings of, of uh, in the Camargue and the surroundings of Arles, and, and this uh, Alpine area in, in uh, placed more at the east in, in Italy. So, um, and we know that uh, in Roman times, uh, the, the delta was ex extremely exploited uh, in, in terms of livestock and, and, and transhumance, uh, was. Uh, Sure, a, a practice that was developed in that period, but we didn't arrive at, at 20 years ago to to, to fix uh, and to characterize these transhumans as in, in southern Alps in, in France. We in the Roman period was not at all an important, at least in the areas where we were studying, was not at all uh, uh, at a time of, of expanding of uh, livestock and pastoral activities like it is in the Neolithic or uh, in, in early medieval times. So maybe the way in Roman times was uh, in that direction, to the east mm -hmm. in, to, in Italy. So we will see, but uh, 
I, yes, uh, it's a, it's an interesting perspective. Uh, it could be possible, of course. Uh, um, so <laughs> I wish to to find some uh, some information uh, in that uh, in that case. And uh, <clears throat> I think also that uh, the the problems of uh, the visibility of archaeological remains in terms of transhuman activity still exist because uh, uh, what kind of uh, traces of this practice leaves uh, are most of all uh, are also biostratigraphic evidence but we don't know how to identify the, to connect uh, biostratigraphic evidences with transhumans practices so in term also in terms of uh, man manufacture in terms of artifact the transhumans also leave uh, some remain but in, in uh, uh, the perishing material, so we don't find in in archaeology, uh, in in archaeological sites, uh, or uh, so it's uh, the the problems also is uh, the problem of the visibility of uh, transhuman traces in terms of archaeological uh, uh, analysis. So right. it's it's a problem, and and that is one of the reason why I I'm focusing of. Uh, to, to find the, the, the link between uh, biostratigraphic evidences and transhuman activity, because it's uh, one of the most important uh, traces, find uh, uh, test, test, find test, <laughs> Okay. Yeah. Thank you. Well, uh, any more questions? You can also ask in, in, in Spanish if you want. Sì, anche in spagnolo. E anche in italiano. Anche in italiano. Nobody? Don't be shy. <laughs> well, so if uh, I think that is there is no more questions, uh, Maura, we are going to we are going to finish our seminar. Okay. Uh, yeah. And then I well I I, I close. I I thank you very much, Valentina, for your presentation, thank you. and thank you everybody for your attention. I hope that uh, well the research will give um, excellent results in the following years, and we expect for wonderful publications around that. Thank you very much, Valentina. Thank you. Bye.